Welcome back. In our last lesson, we just completed the foundation work for the list view. However, anyone who's worked on a Joomla site knows how much data can be added in a relatively short period of time, and finding that data can become a real problem. Paging through the list is not practical, so we need to add some filtering to make it a lot easier. The first thing we'll do is add a text search box and a few drop-down select lists to the view. Jump back to your editor, and if you aren't already there, open up the default.php file in the views slash messages slash tmpl folder. Position your cursor under the form tag and then look for the snippet called backend list layout search filter and double click. This snippet has no variables, so it will just drop the code straight in. Let's have a look at it. The snippet includes a field set with a number of divs representing different filtering elements. All the HTML ID and classes are set to blend with the defined 1.6 administrator template styles. The first div is our search filter. This is made of four different elements. The label for the text field, the text field where you type in your search text, a submit button and a button to clear the result. All this looks pretty standard, but the main thing to note is the way we display the previous search text in the value attribute of the input tag. Just a quick note, the snippet will include code to escape the search text which was included after this video was shot. The next div contains all the select lists that filter on a particular field. The first filter is for the viewing access level. What we're doing here, and pretty much repeating for all the other cases, is opening a select tag with a particular name, in this case filter underscore access, and the on change attribute means that when the user selects a different value from the list, the form will submit automatically. The next line provides a list option for the neutral or unselected condition, and there are a number of standard language keys that you can use for this option. Next, we have a call to a JHTML select helper that will assemble the list of options in the list and also pick the selected list option for us. The first argument, after select.options, is an array of PHP objects that represent the list options. The second and third arguments define the names of the properties in those objects that correspond to the value of the text parts for the option tag. The last argument is the selected state of the list, and you can see we're getting that information from the model state. We'll have a look at how it gets in there shortly. With all these drop-down lists, it's important to understand where the data for the options comes from. Because the view access levels are something that's very common, there's a JHTML helper, access.assetgroups, that will give us a list of the viewing access level titles and their corresponding ID values. Moving on to the next drop-down list, this is for the published state. It's in a very similar format and we use the jgrid.publishedOptions helper to get the options and the selected value is held in the filter.published variable in the model state. Next is the filter for a single category. We're using the jhtml category.options helper to get the options for the list and you'll note this also takes an argument so we get the categories just for this component. The selected value is held in the model state variable called filter.category underscore ID. Finally, we have a filter for the language field. The data for this comes from the content language.existing jhtml helper, and the extra two arguments, both true, relate to showing all language and translating the all string in the list respectively. The selected value is stored in the filter.language variable. That's all we need to include, so jump back to the browser and refresh the page. You'll see everything appears nice and neat, but if you try changing any of the list or submitting search text, it won't work. We need to do some work in the model to allow us to hold the state of these filters and make the query refine the results in the list. We'll do that in the next lesson. See you back soon.